Hello, welcome to the Shaley Hope Center for Healing, where we are manifesting a faith-inspired collaborative community of hope, healing, and prosperity. You've landed on a Healer's Nook video, and we are talking about how to forgive someone, specifically the part in the process where we're figuring out what you want to believe or perceive about the situation or person that you can actually believe. And this is one of my favorite things because I know we cannot skip steps. My name is Bronwyn Olschlager. I'm an intuitive healer. I'm a business mentor. I'm the founder of the Shaley Hope Center for Healing. And my genius zone is organizing and systematizing collaborations. We're definitely collaborating here. So if you are a healer or looking to improve your mental, emotional, energetic, and physical health in a holistic way, then you are in the right place. And I invite you to subscribe and ring the bell for no for notifications. We do post a couple of times a day. And we want to get all of this yummy goodness into your hands and your ears and your experience and all the things. We also invite you to like this video if you like it because it does help the algorithm to send it out there in front of more eyes of people that we can help. And I would love that. So, and if also, if this is helping you make sure you share it with somebody you you think it would help too. If you feel that soul nudge, always follow the soul nudges. Okay. Let's talk about how to forgive someone. So what, like, what do you want to believe? What do you want to perceive about the situation? First, I always like to acknowledge we're not robots. You're not a robot. I'm not a robot. Neither is the person that you're trying to help forgive someone. We don't just get over it. We're not going to skip steps. We're going to do the whole process and acknowledge and validate all of the necessary things, which is just about everything about the thing that hurt. I go over this is actually a series of eight videos. And in the first video, I actually go into what I mean by what I just said. So I'm going to invite you to look at the playlist that I'll make sure to show you by the end of this video so that you can see all the foundational things that I've laid out in this series. But for this video, we've been dissecting this simple um, shifting process. It's part of forgiveness. First, I ask what meaning am I giving to this experience? You might recognize this process. What has feeling this way cost me? What would feel better to believe or perceive, which is what we're going to zoom in on today. And am I ready and willing to start this shift in perception? If the answer is no to that question, then you got to keep doing something. And I'm going to make sure that you have a resource to help you get your head around the process that helped me finally, like I've been in personal development for a really long time. I was helping people. I had a whole company that was all about helping people address their emotional stuff so that they would stop emotional eating and let their body slim down. But there is something about forgiveness that was really, really tricky for me. And a, for a long time, the answer was no, I'm not ready for that shift, even though I wanted to be ready for it. So I got this download from God to teach me how to do this differently, and now I'm passing it along to you. So I am going to invite you to, to look into a way that you can learn that because I have this whole thing that's got the foundation laid out. But there is no shame at all, at all, in taking the time. I even teach my little kids that they need to allow themselves to take the time to cry it out. There's no shame in having your feelings. Come talk about it when you're really ready you know, when you're actually ready. But in the meantime, you got to talk to yourself. You got to, you got to let yourself feel all the feelings instead of trying to shut it down, turn it off, make it go away, get over it. Right. That does not work. Okay. But if the answer is yes, and it's time and you're ready, you can tell. And that's when you start choosing your desired perception and land on something that your mind can believe right now and practice that. Today, we're going to figure out how to do that. Like, am I ready? If the answer is yes, let's figure out what that new desire is. What, what would feel better to believe or perceive? Okay. All right. So let's zoom in on that and let's look at how you'd like to see the situation. If you were giving the benefit of the doubt, okay, this is not to poo poo it. This is not to, to say that that this is true of what happened. We've already acknowledged and validated that situation was hard, harmful, right? It hurt you. It hurt your feelings. But we're also acknowledging that we want to change how we see it in our own mind when we remember it. We were trying to 
give it a different meaning about us. Okay. So we've gone through this whole process. What does this mean about me? Oh, it means I'm not lovable or something like that. It means they didn't love me and therefore I'm not lovable. But what if the situation, what if we wanted to view the situation a little bit differently? What if it's true that they don't love you or maybe they just don't love themselves, right? Maybe that's the new perception we have. Well, they didn't love themselves enough to be kind to the people around them. And this is a very trite example, but I think I'm getting my point across. They didn't love themselves enough to love other people and they directed that at me and I chose to give it meaning that I'm not lovable. Okay. If that is the belief, that's the example we're looking at. If that's the belief, then the benefit of the doubt would be that they don't love themselves enough to love others. And so instead of giving it the meaning that it hurt, that I'm not lovable, I choose to give the benefit of the doubt that they just think they're not lovable, but it really doesn't mean anything about me. Okay. So here's the shift. What would I say if I were looking at it logically benefit of the doubt? Okay. that's what I mean by that. Okay. So if the person who hurt you was definitely malicious, look at what justice you would like to believe has happened or will happen. So think karma. Are they, you know, do you hope that they aren't hurting somebody else? Like I'm talking about legitimate evil people. Okay. So like, for example, I had two yucky men do something really bad to me when I was two years old. I don't remember who they were. I don't think I knew them. I think it was a babysitter type situation. And I was, you know, I had some really bad things happen. It was not good. And I wanted nothing more than justice to be done to those people. And in my, in my processing all of that, I got to say, well, I hope justice is done. I hope they're in jail. They're evil. (laughs) I hope they're in jail. I hope they can't hurt anybody else. Okay. And if something else happened to them between them and God, I don't know, but I hope at least mortal justice has been done to those evil men so they can't hurt anybody else. And that helps me see this situation differently. I just give different meaning to that. It's not about me. I'm okay. I'm choosing. I want to see myself as okay. And I need to see myself seeing them, hoping that they get justice. And that solved my angst. And I'm not angry. I just, I know it's okay for me to want mortal justice to be done to them through the justice system, right? That is a yes. So I feel like I'm a good person wanting that because I don't want them to hurt somebody else. Okay. That's the example. So what about, okay, so let's talk about choosing the things, choose the thing that feels the easiest. Oh, this is my favorite. Okay. Choose the thing that feels the easiest and happiest to believe right at this present moment. You have to allow your brain to do its thing. And there's, so allow for line upon line progression. And I've shared this before. I share this all the time. It is probably my favorite example for helping illustrate this. I like to think I'm going to use money as an example, okay? Because you can heal your relationship with money too. When I was first healing my relationship with money, I couldn't go from money is hard for me, nobody wants to pay me, I'm giving all this value for free, money is hard, blah, 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 to money is easy for me like it is right now. I went through this process where I started at the beginning and and because I couldn't skip steps to money's easy for me and my brain wouldn't believe that. My brain was like, yeah, right, shut up, you know? So I needed something that my brain wouldn't go, yeah, right, shut up about. That's what we're looking for, that baby step into this. With money, it was, I want to believe money falls at my feet. It's so easy for me. It's like it's being thrown at me and just given to me all the time but I couldn't just believe that that was happening when it was, and I had no evidence of it. So I had to create some evidence. So what I did was I chose into the belief that I could find money on the ground at any parking lot at a grocery store or Walmart or whatever. Okay. And because I chose into that and I went looking, it became true. My brain believed me and that meant money was easy for me. And and my brain would believe it. So I'm like, okay, money's easy for me because I can always find money on the ground at a parking lot. 
And then it became, oh, something shifted in my energy and I started attracting um, people who would pay me for the thing I provided. And then it was like, oh, money's easy for me. People actually pay me for my services. And then it was, and then it became, it just snowballed from there and it just became easy. Now I believe money is easy for me. I can get it whenever I want. And so can everybody else. And I hope I can always pass that along. Right. So that's a really, really good example of allowing the line upon line to happen in this progression. This is big. It's so fun too. I love that part of the process because it's like exploring. Okay. So if your mind refuses to grab hold of something, if you feel like there's just too much pain to still be expressed out of your body, then you need to spend some time with it. And I, I do this very special kind of journaling process and I teach it in my redefine and forgive 21 day experience. It's a free 21 day experience. You get 21 emails from me reminding you how to log in so that you can get back in there and just block out 20 minutes a day for yourself. I did this for a year. It made a huge difference. I still use it when I get stuck. And now I'm to the point where I can actually do it without so much paper all the time. I get I go through this process really, really fast. And it's like building muscles. And I want that for you. So I'm inviting you to go get this. The link is in the description. You can share that with your clients if they are stuck. It's perfectly kid-friendly if you want to watch it with a kid and help them learn how to talk to themselves this way. It's very different. I haven't seen anything like this from anybody else. So I invite you to go grab that. And if you have any thoughts and questions that you'd like to share with me, make sure you leave a comment. I will respond and so will my collaborators. And I might just make a video responding to your question if you ask me to. Just make sure you ask in the comments. Okay. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell if you want more from us so you can find your way back here through the notifications. And if you liked this video, if it helped at all, please hit the like icon and it will send it out into uh, suggested searches land where we need it so other people can see this value. And of course, if you know somebody, go ahead and share it. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Here's my suggestion. This is the playlist I promised you. And there might be something else on this channel that you just